2021 meeting of the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners. Note the presence of all three commissioners. And I'm going to ask our presonitary, Noah Marvere, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. this morning uh, as, as is typical although hopefully someday this is not going to be typical so hopefully Sunday someday soon I'm going to begin with some uh, updates on the COVID-19 mitigation efforts so the great news is that we have more than 72 percent of our total population in the county having received at least one dose of the vaccine of the vaccine which is fantastic and uh, Due to the increased number of people within our county getting vaccinated, we're seeing a real and sustained decrease in our COVID-19 cases. As of today, Montgomery County has seen 37 consecutive days below 5% positivity, 26 consecutive days below 50 cases per day, and 12 consecutive days below 20 cases per day. Uh, we have not seen numbers like that since literally the first week of the pandemic back in March a year ago. Yesterday, the Montgomery County Office of Public Health announced updated masking guidance for summer camps and summer schools. Effective Monday, June 21st, 2021, masking for vaccinated and unvaccinated individuals at summer camps and summer schools will be optional unless required by that business or school or organization. The Office of Public Health updated the county's masking mitigation strategy based on count, case counts being at a record low, meaning that the likelihood of community spread of COVID-19 is low risk. Masking is still necessary in healthcare facilities, congregate living facilities, and when using public transportation. And as usual, businesses and organizations and schools can have their own policies in place that may be more stringent than state and county guidance. We continue to encourage anyone who has not yet been vaccinated to consider it so that we can further protect our community and put an end to this deadly virus. At next Monday, June the 21st, I'm also pleased to be part of a vaccination effort with the Montgomery County Immunization Coalition, Giant Pharmacy, and the Elmwood Park Zoo. This event is free and open to the public from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. for anyone 12 years of age and older. Anyone who gets vaccinated at the event will get a free ticket to the zoo or a pass to come back another day. In addition, there will be a raffle for Hers Hershey Park tickets, giant gift cards, zoo family memberships, and Wawa free hot beverage coupons and more. It's important that we get everybody vaccinated, including mascots, so during this event, I will have the real honor of vaccinating not only the Montgomery County Immunization Coalition's mascot, Victor Vaccine, but the Philly Fanatic. <laughs> so we're going to need a big needle for that one. So hopefully they are coming well prepared. Our friends at Aclamo will be on site to help with registration and support Spanish language access and interpretation at the event. To register for this Elmwood Park Zoo vaccination event, you can visit our vaccine page at www.montcopa.org forward slash COVID-19 vaccine. So I hope to see everyone there at this very family friendly event. Just want to remind everyone that getting vaccinated doesn't cost anything. It is widely available and it will help protect you and your family. The Montgomery County Office of Public Health is currently administering the Pfizer vaccine for those aged 12 and older and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine for those aged 18 and older. We are accepting walk-ups at all of our clinics, or you can make an appointment on our website to speed up the on-site registration process. Registration can be accessed by visiting vaccine.montcopa.org. If you or a family member have an, any appointment issues, you can email COVID19 at montcopa.org or call our hotline at 833-875-3967.
As a reminder, all county facilities and offices, including our testing and vaccination sites, will be closed tomorrow in observance of the Juneteenth holiday. Normal hours will resume on Monday. Now I wanna recognize two members of our county family for their work to keep our communities informed on the COVID-19 <coughs> pandemic here in Montgomery County. The county was recently awarded the 2020 Geographic Information System or GIS in Excellence Award for the county's COVID-19 hub and dashboards. This award was given to our GIS manager, David Long, and GIS analyst, Jim Rebeles, who were selected for the award by GIS professionals across the Commonwealth at the County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania 2021 Virtual PA GIS Conference. This hub provided our region with an up-to-the-moment integration of GIS map and health data about the spread of COVID-19 in Montgomery County. Building trust with our communities by being transparent and delivering data-driven information about COVID-19 has always been our top priority from the beginning. I'm proud that Montgomery County was able to lead the way in providing the most information about the pandemic in our region. I congratulate Dave and Jim on the work they've done to help our administration and residents make informed data-driven decisions about how to stay safe during the pandemic. The site began with a simple interactive map showing the location and demographics of COVID-19 cases in the county and then evolved into a full hub site with case maps, hospitalization data, safety net and financial resources, and general information about the pandemic. The original site had, uh, has had over 8 million views and continues to get an average of 10,000 hits a day. Starting this month, the hub will be updated weekly as our case counts and other indicators continue to drop and as more members of our community get vaccinated. So just a huge thanks to Dave and Jim. Uh, they have put in countless hours of work on this, uh, particularly in those early weeks when we literally, like they got something up overnight and they just continue to improve and refine it as uh, we have asked them to put more and more on that site. So uh, congratulations on this well-deserved recognition. And with that, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Commissioner Lawrence. All right, thank you. Chairwoman Arkush, um, I want to add my congratulations to Dave and Jim too and thank them for all their hard work during the pandemic on the site. Um, and now I want to talk about Crave Monco, which is a special promotional program from the Valley Forks Tourism and Convention Board to help our restaurants, breweries, wineries, and distilleries as mitigation measures have been lifted. Montgomery County has more than 1,800 restaurants, breweries, wineries, and distilleries. Um, over 22,000 employees, which is 4% of the employment in Montgomery County. And we know that they've been particularly hard hit during the past year. So our tourism board will be giving free promotions, including videos, media, and public relations, influencer segments, and social media on the CraveMontcoMonth.com website and on the Monco Makers app throughout the whole month of July. Restaurants will be able to promote special menus and drinks, free appetizers and cocktails and other deals to entice customers to come to the restaurants or establishment. So far, approximately 50 businesses have signed up, so there's still a lot of room to grow there for, uh, for our restaurants to get in on this. And businesses who are interested in participating in the program can go to CraveMoncoMonth.com to sign up. And the Tourism Board will be running a similar program from September 17th through the 26th for our arts and culture venues and attractions that represent $100 million in economic impact and thousands of jobs here in the county. So look forward to more news on that later this month and please go out and support our small businesses. Uh, okay, before we move on to public comment, I just want to uh, acknowledge Councilman Tom LaFerra here from the Norristown Municipal Council. Welcome. All right, Ms. Co. Francisco. Do we have, um, we're, we're going to start with public comment on matters appearing on the agenda. Is there anyone in the room who would like to speak to matters on the agenda? Okay, then anyone online? Great. Mr. Stein, would you please read the rules? Absolutely, and good morning. <clears throat> All right, uh, speakers should identify themselves online or they're physically present, should sign the list at the back of the room. 
speakers should identify themselves by name and municipality. All public comments must be relevant or germane to county business. Under the law, this means that the subject matter of all comments must be limited to issues or items which are currently before the commissioners for consideration or which may come before the commissioners for consideration at a future meeting. Whether a matter is germane to county business is a determination to be made by the county solicitor. Profane, slanderous, or discriminatory language or comments will not be tolerated in accordance with the county's non-discrimination policy. Time limit of two minutes will be monitored and county staff will respectfully request speakers to conclude their comments if the speaker goes beyond the time allotted. The board is not required to respond to public comments during the course of the meeting, so the public is reminded that this is not an opportunity for questions and answers or dialogue. The board chair may direct appropriate county staff to follow up on any questions or additional comments after the meeting. Disruptive behavior, including but not limited to yelling from the seats or attempting to disrupt the meeting in any other way, arguing with whether a matter is germane to county business once the solicitor has made a determination of such, or refusing to yield the floor once time has elapsed and being requested to sit down shall be grounds for removal or muting uh, from the meeting without further admonishment or warning. And as always, commissioners welcome written correspondence, comments, and feedback at commissioners at montopa.org. Thank you, Mr. Stein. All right. Okay, our first person with their hand raised is Laura Lehman. You are now unmuted. Hi, commissioners. Um, Laura Lehman I, from Abington Township. And I, um, I wanted to thank you for uh, setting a meeting. I was very excited that we finally had a meeting to discuss some of the issues, but unfortunately, the answers uh, that I got at that meeting were exactly like being at this board meeting, where, where literally, apparently, nothing is going to be addressed. So the two minutes for 30 items on your agenda is a violation of Sunshine Law. It's not a reasonable amount of time to speak. If I had three items or four items and you said two minutes per item, or if you have more than five items, one minute per item, that might be reasonable. So uh, it, we haven't solved anything with the meeting when you actually acted in the meeting the same way that you're acting here. This is our rules and it doesn't matter. There, the, by law, by sunshine law, we are allowed to argue over what's germane. In other words, to tell you what we perceive to be the problem with Mr. Stein's judgment on that. And, and you aren't providing that. You have a chat, but our end of the chat is disabled. And all you have to do is make that abled and you're following the law. So it is distressing to see you not following the law. I also see on your agenda, you have item K14 contract renewals for health and human services. I, I would like to have an answer. Uh, I know you're not required to give one, but I would like you to give one as to whether you have anyone at the county who oversees massage parlors in any way. There's state law on the permits for the owners and local law that we have enacted in Abington, but does anybody oversee anything in the county on massage parlors? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lehman. Anyone else on agenda items? Yes. Uh, we do have someone who is logged in as RSVP. If you could please identify yourself. You are now unmuted. This is John Krasminski. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is John Krasminski. I'm a resident of Horsham Township and a former corporate risk manager. I've spoken to you twice before regarding the safety of older and disabled long-term care residents during the outsourcing of the ombudsman function. The proposed outsourcer, Kerry, currently manages an ombudsman program in parts of Philadelphia. However, learning to manage ombudsman services in Montgomery County, which has the program that is estimated to be four times larger in number of beds and number of facilities, will be a huge challenge for Kerry. Ombudsman services, largely relationship-based in nature, are not easily scaled, nor is there a lot of obvious leverage to be had when a small program from Philadelphia tries to absorb one the size of Monco's. This process is further complicated by the COVID-related crises still evident in nursing homes, as well as by the likely attrition of key county personnel and the loss of their knowledge of the Monco Ombudsman program. Sadly, our seniors and disabled citizens will be at great risk during this transition time, which I believe could last for 18 months or more. 
The enormity of this task cries out for a comprehensive transition plan that involves both for the county and carry. Unless Montgomery County stays involved in the ombudsman program until a complete transition to carry is completed, carry is likely to fail and Monco's most vulnerable citizens will pay the price. I believe that the ombudsman program is critically important and that cannot be interrupted or abandoned while responsibilities are being transitioned from the county to carry. Commissioners, if you approve the carry contract, then you must mitigate the risk of program failure by exercising strict oversight of the transition and be prepared to offer county resources, including personnel and funding. Our senior and disabled residents deserve the full and continuous attention of Monco's leadership so they are not the unintended victims of the steep learning curve associated with a relatively small social services agency taking on an enormous responsibility for which they are likely not prepared. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for agenda items? Okay, we do have one other person here with their hand raised. Lydia Krasinski, you are now unmuted. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Lydia Torres Krasinski. I am a Montgomery County volunteer long-term care ombudsman. I have expressed my opposition to the Montgomery County commissioners. The Pennsylvania legislatures representing Montgomery County and to Montgomery County Office of Senior Services about the decision made to outsource the long-term care ombudsman program. This is an unnecessary and unsafe decision made during a COVID-19 pandemic that has negatively affected long-term care facilities globally. Instead of strengthening and supporting the Montgomery County ombudsman program, the Office of Senior Services made the decision to remove the ombudsman program and as stated on today's agenda, hand over the program to CARI, a Philadelphia-based nonprofit organization for $1.7 million. Long-term care ombudsmen are highly trained individuals who in countless ways advocate for the health, safety, welfare, and rights of residents living in long-term care facilities. For the next year plus, due to a transition that is cloaked in secrecy, the Montgomery County long-term care residents will not be receiving the advocate services ombudsmen provide. Ombudsmen are now beginning to see and hear about the damage COVID has caused to residents. In a conversation with a staff member of a facility I serve, I was informed that some of the residents I advocated for died of COVID. Some are experiencing declining health and a few just gave up to depression and loneliness due to being shuttered for more than a year. It has been a painful experience to watch the Office of Senior Services dismantle the ombudsman program with such determination. Personally, I'm struggling to understand how I can continue in my role as my mentor and seasoned colleagues depart. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Any general public comment? So we'll move to items, I'm sorry, just general public comment. Okay, we do have one person with their hand raised on Zoom. Back to Laura Lehman, you are now unmuted. Okay, so first of all, I would like to support what the last two speakers were talking about. Nonprofits do not have the same accountability to residents and to budgets and oversight. And the points that they're making show that there are some very serious concerns that literally need to be addressed. Mr. Gale, you did not respond at all to me. So I have not had any meeting with you. I would like also to have a meeting with you on the issues that I've been bringing up. You have people in your planning commission who are completely unqualified to be there. And when I showed you documentation, including testimony from the township, the former township manager, it was ignored as though, okay, the law hasn't adjudicated this a felony yet. And so therefore it's not a problem. I'm telling you, I have documents. Those are documents. That's testimony. There's a whistleblower suit 
I don't know what more you would need to say that you will investigate further and not employ people like that who have problems with the exact things that they are overseeing. And you said he's overseeing general planning and the creation of the plan, and that's not the case. Those general plans and overviews often have to do with what the developer's rights are and what our, our local laws are. And that man should not be, uh, we're talking about Steve Klein, should not be in that position. And Nathan, uh, who is our uh, uh, planner, also has a conflict. He's paid by the developer to help write the plan that he is going to oversee and paid by the taxpayer. That needs your attention. Please act. The, the, the response that I got about the meeting was completely unsatisfying. Thank you, Ms. All right, anyone else for general public comment? Okay, great. Then we will move on to approval of the minutes. I will move to approve the June 3rd, 2021 minutes of the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners. Is there a second? I will second. Second by Commissioner Lawrence. Any board comment? Hearing now, we'll move to a vote. Are there any negative votes? Hearing none, motion carries. Minutes are approved. All right, next we have a very exciting presentation from um, our historic site supervisor at Peter Wentz Farmstead, Mar Margaret Leaker Waits. Hello, thank you. Thank you so much for, for giving us this opportunity. Um, if you'd like to put up the first slide, we will be looking at a, a, a front view of the Peter Wentz Farmstead in Worcester Township. The house was built in 1758 and the property was purchased by Montgomery County in 1969. Uh, the Peter Wentz Farmstead is one of five historic properties owned by the county. <coughs> Historical documents have played a truly major role in the restoration and preservation of the Wentz Farmstead and of all the historic properties. The county was originally interested in owning Wentz because we could prove through several records in uh, George Washington's papers in the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., that Washington really did sleep here uh, two different times during October of 1777 for a total of five nights. But the Wentz Farmstead is also important to preserve because it's an excellent ambassador for a much larger number, a great number of stories in this area. And there are two groups of public records that have given us a tremendous amount of information about this house uh, and the activity here. Uh, the first is the Pennsylvania Gazette, the newspaper started by Benjamin Franklin, and the second are the tax records for Worcester Township. Uh, next slide, please. To illustrate the sources that we're re we are relying on to tell as much as we know of it, the story of the history of Jack at the Wentz Farmstead, uh, Jack was an enslaved person who uh, was, was in residence at the farmstead for, for a number of years in the, the uh, uh, second half, early of the second half of the 18th century. We put the documents from these two sources, the Pennsylvania Gazette and the, the Township Tax Records together, and put them in chronological order so you can read the sequence. On the um, first column on the, the beige portion of the timeline, what you're looking at is the earliest record of an enslaved person being at the Wentz Farmstead. This is an advertisement in the Pennsylvania Gazette dated November 6, 1766, and it was placed by Peter Wentz of Worcester Township, stating publicly that a Negro man, Negro being the word that was most frequently used during the 18th century uh, to describe an enslaved person, uh, a person named Jack had run away. And Wentz is advertising saying um, anyone meeting Jack is asked to secure him in a jail or to return him to Wentz in exchange for a reward. The next piece down in the column, uh, titled Burlington, November 10th, 1766, is also from the Pennsylvania Gazette. And this is a response from a man named Ephraim Phillips, who was essentially a professional jailer in uh, Burlington, New Jersey. And Phillips is stating that uh, Jack has been, has been uh, secured. Um, Jack 
told Phillips that he is owned by Peter Wentz of Worcester and that Peter Wentz is publicly notified that unless he comes to pay the jailer and take Jack away, Phillips will simply sell him. It appears that Wentz did come and redeem Jack and bring him back to the farmstead. Uh, next slide, please. Um, here in the uh, 1767 tax record, we see Wentz's tax assessment showing that he's taxed for the value of one Negro, most probably Jack. Um, the next in the tax assessment in the sequence, 1769, shows Peter Wentz is being taxed for the values of two enslaved people. Again, not named, but we're guessing that one of these people is Jack. Next slide, please. And here again in 1774, there's one uh, enslaved person being mentioned. Um, yeah, next slide, please. In January 11th, on January 11th, 1777, the issue of the Pennsylvania Gazette, we find a second so-called runaway ad placed by Peter Wentz of Worcester Township, notifying uh, the public that uh, Jack escaped a second time. Jack is described as being, and I'm quoting from the Gazette here, about 34 or 35 years of age, five foot five or five foot six inches tall, his left leg much thicker than the right. He has on a new white linsey jacket, buckskin breeches, light blue yarn stockings, new shoes with large brass buckles, and a good wool hat. Once later goes on to say that Jack says he has liberty from me to look for a new master, and Wentz is requesting that Jack again be held. Uh, he'll pay a reward and reclaim him. To help give Jack more of a physical presence in the house at once, a very exacting uh, reproduction of all of the, the, the clothing items mentioned in this runaway ad were produced. Uh, the Lindsay fabric, Lindsay Woolsey fabric, was hand woven. The clothing was also made by hand, and it's now on display in the loft of the house, along with a panel illustrating the paper trail that we, we traced to come up with this information. But looking back at these documents, it still leaves us with the unanswered question. The second time was Jack successful in his attempt to escape. This time there's no response in the Pennsylvania Gazette, no corresponding ad telling Wentz that Jack was secured and, and was ready to be returned. So as they said, it leaves us with this question. Uh, next slide, please. So um, it's, it's just it's an, an open question that we don't have enough documents yet to be able to answer. Um, so one possibility is that Jack was able to get to Philadelphia where there was a very vibrant free black community. And if uh, Jack made it from the Wentz Farmstead into Philadelphia and to people who were very likely to be extremely welcoming and friendly, um, it's possible that they were able to put him on a ship and he would go, go north, possibly to Boston or to New Hampshire. And from there, he would continue his journey towards freedom. Um, and we will continue uh, looking for additional documentation to see if we can fill in the, the, the second half of this, uh, this, this the puzzle of what happened to Jack. Um, last month, the Peter Wentz Farmstead was uh, honored to be included on the listing of the National Park Service's Underground Railroad Network to Freedom list of historic sites. Mm -hmm. The goal of the Network to Freedom, and I'm quoting the Park Service here, is to promote the history of resistance to enslavement. And Jack truly is a wonderful example of this. Um, not once, but twice ran away. And uh, Jack, who lived on the farmstead just before the American Revolution, as I said, is, is, is a, 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 very, a very fine <coughs> example of this uh, resistance to, the, to enslavement. Uh, being designated as part of this network helps us make connections with other historic sites and raises awareness of this very significant aspect of our, our region's history. In closing, I'd like to recognize Virginia Kapaki, who is our former museum educator at the Once Farmstead, for uh, sending in the nomination of the Farmstead to the Park Service. Thank you, Jenny. And also, recognition goes to Sarah Beal, Kim Boyce, Ruth Conrad, and Linda Snyder for their work at building the documents and for uh, working on the exhibit in the, in the loft at the farmhouse. Um, just to, to let, let uh, people know, the farmstead is open every day except Mondays and holidays. You're always welcome to walk the grounds on your own during our open hours. 
Uh, if you'd like a tour, which includes information and more detail about Jack, uh, we are doing tours by appointment of the house. And when you call to make your reservation, uh, please let us know that you are interested specifically in the tour uh, um, with information, extra information about Jack, and we would be more than happy to do that for you. Uh, you can contact us either through the county website, which is uh, www.montcopa.org, and look for the Peter Once Farmstead, and both our phone number and email contact information is right there. So I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to, to let people know about this and uh, welcome people to, to come to Wyn. Great. Well, Margaret, thank you so much. And uh, it, is, it is so important that we continue to uh, find these stories, reveal these stories, share these stories with our community. And I know this was just a tremendous undertaking to get the uh, Underground Railroad designation. So I just want to thank and congratulate you and your team for uh, getting this done. It's really, really something. Um, it's wonderful that it is happening right before Juneteenth and that we're able to acknowledge that this, uh, in, this in this particular week. And uh, you will be available for tours this Saturday, correct, uh, as we celebrate Juneteenth? Uh, we, we are fully booked for Saturday and Sunday, but, um, and we're thrilled at the response we've, we've gotten uh, to, to the, the offering of these tours. So that's why we're, we're extending it and saying if, if, if people would like to come, um, please, when you call to make a reservation, let us know that's what you're specifically interested in, and we'll be, be very happy to, 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 do the, uh, to supply the extra additional information that's part of the, the special tour. All right, well, great. Well, I'm glad there's been such a wonderful response. Uh, I will, Commissioner Lawrence and I will be seeing you on Saturday, so very much looking forward to that. Um, As are we. Thank you. Great. Ms. Blades, thank you and your staff for um, all your hard work you've done in uncovering Jack's story and telling Jack's story. Um, I actually grew up right down the street from the Peter Wentz Farmstead in Talmensen and then lived in Worcester, um, but never went there until I was an adult um, with, with my children. Um, and the story was always George Washington's love here. Um, so I think, it's, I think it's fantastic that you all have continued to research and tell the complete story um, because we need to understand our history completely <coughs> because it helps inform uh, our present and our future as well. So thank you. Look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Sounds wonderful. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Blades. I also would like to thank you and our county employees that helped promote and preserve the deep history that took place here in Montgomery County. Thank you for making this rich information available to all our constituents and the general public that can learn so much about what happened here in Montgomery County. So I wish you success in your upcoming tours. And again, thank you for this update. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, moving on to resolutions, Mr. Stein, a TEFRA. A TEFRA, Tax Equity and Fiscal Responsibility Act of 1981. Um, this is a request from the Montgomery County Industrial Development Authority to issue bonds in the amount of $36 million on behalf of Germantown Academy. Funds will be used in part to refund previously issued bonds as well as for projects both at their um, Morris Road campus as well as the acquisition of the property at 7187 Lafayette Avenue in White Marsh. There was a public hearing held on June 3rd, and there was no public comment received. And as always, there is no uh, obligation on the county. Great. Thank you, Mr. Stein. I will move that the proper county officials, in accordance with the authority conferred by law, subject to the approval of the county solicitor, hereby approve the project for the public school of Germantown, be it further resolved that the approvals and declarations in this resolution shall in no way pledge or otherwise obligate the credit or taxing power of the county nor shall the county be liable for the payment of principal, interest, or premium, if any, on any obligations issued to finance the project, nor shall the county have any obligation or liability whatsoever with respect to the project. Is there a second? I will second. Second by Commissioner Lawrence. Any board comment? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. Are there any negative votes? Hearing none, motion carries. All right, Mr. Stein, authorization of a transfer of a radio tower. Yes, uh, the radio tower is at 1005 Horsham Road. With the completion of the public safety radio project upgrade, um, just uh, within this year, we no longer require the use of certain radio towers that were built about 20 years ago, one of those being the one at 1005 uh, Horsham Road, which is on municipal property. Per the agreement that we had with Horsham Township, we are required to remove that tower once we no longer need it. The township requested that we transfer it to them. This would save us the cost 
of having to demolish it, and it's something that the township would find useful. So we're requesting the authorization to transfer it for $1. Okay. I will move that the proper county officials, in accordance with the authority conferred by law, subject to the approval of the county solicitor, are hereby authorized to transfer the radio tower located at 1005 Horsham Road to Horsham Township for a purchase price of $1. Is there a second? I will second. Second by Commissioner Lawrence. And Mr. Stein, I just want to just confirm that there is, that Horsham Township would assume all liability associated with this tower. Absolutely. Anything? Yes. Okay. Terrific. Any other board comment? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. Are there any negative votes? Hearing none, motion carries. Ms. O'Malley, advertisements of bids and RFPs. Yes. We have a bid on behalf of assets and infrastructure for the replacement of the electrical system in one Montgomery Plaza. The successful bidder will replace the main electrical infrastructure for the one Montgomery Plaza office building. Contract will be awarded to the lowest responsible bidder. A bid on behalf of assets and infrastructure for Deep Creek Lake restoration and partial dredging services at Green Lane Park. The project will return water quality to a better biological condition and allow for more water volume and capacity. Contract will be awarded to the lowest responsible bidder. A bid on behalf of assets and infrastructure for tree removal services. The successful firm will provide systematic hazardous tree removal service to effectively cut down and remove or return to earth diseased, infested, dying, or dead native or invasive trees that present current safety issues at Green Lane. Contract will be awarded to the lowest responsible bidder. A bid on behalf of district courts for janitorial services. The successful <coughs> bidder will provide cleaning services for the district courts. Contract will be awarded to the lowest responsible bidder. A bid on behalf of sheriff and security for uniforms. The successful bidder will provide summer and winter uniforms for county sheriff's deputies and security officers. Contract will be awarded to the lowest responsible bidder. RFP on behalf of Health and Human Services for a lead-based paint inspector or risk assessor. The successful firm will provide lead-based paint inspection services for the Office of Public Health. Contract will be awarded to the highest rated firm. RFP on behalf of Commerce for redevelopment of 500, 600, and 700 block sections of Washington Street in Norristown. The successful responder will provide plans for the acquisition and redevelopment of the site that conforms to the zoning and economic development goals of the municipality. Contract will be awarded to the highest rated provider. And an advertisement of an RFP for the Southeastern Pennsylvania Task Force. An RFP for project management services. The successful responder will provide project management for the Chester County Fire and EMS Strategic Plan Steering Committee. The contract will be awarded to the highest rated provider. All bids and RFPs are available on the county's purchasing website at www.montcopa.org slash purchasing. Thank you, Ms. O'Malley. Okay, we'll be doing this in two motions uh, because of the uh, Southeastern Pennsylvania Task Force. So the first motion will include the county bids and RFPs. Uh, I will move to approve the preceding request for the advertisement of bids and RFPs as described by the Deputy Chief Operating Officer, Ms. Barbara O'Malley and to authorize the proper county officials to execute the same, subject to the approval of the county solicitor. Is there a second? I will second. Second by Commissioner Lawrence. Any board comment? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. Are there any negative votes? Hearing none, motion carries. Next, I will move to approve the preceding request for the advertisement of an RFP for the Southeastern Pennsylvania Task Force, as described by the Deputy Chief Operating Officer, Ms. Barbara O'Malley, and to authorize the proper county officials to execute the same, subject to the approval of the county solicitor. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Lawrence. Uh, any board comment? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. Are there any negative votes? Hearing none, motion carries. All right, Ms. O'Malley, awards of contract. One, a contract award, Human Resources, Commercial Lines of Insurance, KMRD Partners Incorporated of Warrington, PA, $1,444,269. Contract authorizes the purchase of 27 insurance policies for commercial liability coverage through 7-1-2021 to 6-30-2022 term. Award provides general liability, law enforcement liability, business auto, public officials liability, employment practices liability, lead excess, first excess, property, pollution liability, fine arts for Peter Wentz Farmstead, Penny Packer Mills, and Cotsgrove Manor, fine arts for Audubon Collection, fiduciary liability, crime, healthcare professionals, lawyer professionals, excess workers' compensation, travel accident for the bomb squad, accidental death and dismemberment for economic and workforce development programs, 
adult probation, volunteers, foster parents' liability, and seven flood policies. Two, contract award, assets and infrastructure, bridge rehabilitation, Loftus Construction Incorporated of Soderton, PA, $1,299,000. Contract provides for bridge construction and rehabilitation for the Stone Arch Bridge at our historic site, Sunrise Mills. Specification 6440 was viewed by 21 providers with six responses received. Contract is awarded to the lowest responsible bidder. <laughs> Contract award, assets and infrastructure, barn rehabilitation, Donald E. Reisinger Incorporated of Westchester, PA, $45,200. Contract provides for the Peter Wentz Barn Rehabilitation. Specification 6438 was viewed by seven firms with one response received. Contract is awarded to the lowest responsible bidder. Four, contract award, information and technology solutions software. SHI International Corporation of Somerset, New Jersey, $73,519.79. Contract provides help desk software used for service request ticketing. Contract is for a one year period beginning July 31, 2021. Software is available through a PA CoStars contract. Five, contract award, district attorney, software. Computer Square Incorporated, Keysby, New Jersey, $35,000. <coughs> contract provides research and document depository software for the district attorney. Software is available through a PA state contract. Six, contract award, public safety, truck. GL Sayer Peterbilt of Conshohocken, PA, $129,508. Contract provides a 28-foot box truck for public safety. Truck is available through a PA CoStars contract. Seven, contract award, public safety, PPE. Bound tree of Dublin, Ohio, $29,859.70. Contract provides nitrile gloves for county first responders. Gloves are available through a PA CoStars contract. Contract award, health and human services, ombudsman services. Center for advocacy for the rights and interests of the elderly of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, $1,702,866. Contract provides ombudsman services for the elderly of the county. RFP 2117 was viewed by eight firms with two proposals received. Contract term is 8-1-2021 through 7-31-2024 with two optional annual renewals. Nine, contract award Health and Human Services Satisfaction Advocacy Programming, Hope Works Incorporated of Norristown, PA, $655,870 for one year. Contract provides youth and family satisfaction surveys for family advocacy programs. RFP 2122 was viewed by 23 firms with five responses received. Contract is awarded to the highest rated firm. Contract term is 7-1-2021 to 6-30-2024 with two optional annual renewals. Contract award planning commission signal upgrade. Miller Brothers of Conshohocken, PA, $178,994.39. Contract provides for the Turwood Road Penny Pack Trail Crossing Signal Upgrade. Specification 6441 was viewed by eight providers with one response received. The bid meets the requirements of the project and is acceptable compared to the engineer's pre-bid estimate and previous signal projects. <coughs> 11, Contract Amendment Planning Commission Consultant. Stantec Consulting Services Incorporated of Laurel, Maryland, $8,105. Contract provides right-of-way acquisition services for the Ridge Pike Improvement Project between Crescent Avenue Northwestern Avenue in White Marsh and Springfield Townships. Amendment provides an additional temporary construction easement necessary to accommodate temporary pavement for widening of Manor Road during construction. 12. Contract Amendment Information and Technology Solutions Staff Support A Plus Technologies Incorporated of King of Prussia, PA, $24,045. Contract provides staff augmentation services for day and night shifts. Services are available through a JSA contract. 13. Contract Amendment Assets and Infrastructure. Construction Management, Skanska USA Building Incorporated of Bluebell, PA, $585,140. Contract provides construction management services for the One Montgomery Plaza building facade project. Amendment provides extended services to cover the One Montgomery Plaza electrical and mechanical infrastructure construction, including pre-construction, estimating, constructability <coughs> review, construction logistics planning, construction scheduling, procurement management, and construction work management. 14, one contract and three contract renewals for Health and Human Services. Providers and services are listed at the end of the agenda and the back of the room. All right, thank you. I will move to approve the preceding awards of contract as described <coughs> by the Deputy Chief Operating Officer, Ms. Barbara O'Malley, and to authorize the proper county officials to execute the same subject to the approval of the county solicitor. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Lawrence. 
Ms. O'Malley, I, we've heard a lot of public comment about the ombudsman situation, and I, I want to just say publicly how much we have so deeply appreciated the individuals that have worked with our uh, senior services department uh, in this role. And could you just please explain a bit about why this is necessary, why this change is necessary? Yes, the state has indicated to us that they see an inherent conflict of interest between the ombudsman service and our existing services that we provide at the Office of Senior Services. And nearly half of the aging and adult services offices throughout the state of Pennsylvania have gone to independent ombudsman service providers. CARI is an organization that would provide that service as an independent organization, they're also able to do more advocacy and outreach for our seniors that we as a county government entity are not able to do. And I would like to say they are embarking on a transition plan and are meeting with the state and the proposed provider about the transition plan and will be heavily involved in the transition of this service. Great. So for those that aren't quite um, as familiar with the workings of the Department of Senior Services, um, could you describe what the current situation is with the ombuds people? people, how ombudsman uh, staff, yes. and how, how they're supervised and who supervises them? Yes. So we have existing ombudsman staff within the Office of Aging. The state, several years ago, because of this conflict, uh, requires that the state actually provides the direct performance supervision of the staff that are actually employed by the county. So the supervisor that we have on site is really there for administrative purposes, like time off, performance, things like that. And in fact, that internal supervisor that the county has does not have access to the database that the ombudsman used to manage and provide services through the ombudsman program. So it truly is a state-run program with the staff located within the county. And again, the encouragement and the reason for this is because there is a conflict due to the variety of other services the county provides in terms of determining eligibility and other services we provide as Office of Senior Services. So again, this is the something that the state has identified as a potential conflict and obviously using an independent organization is a way to make sure that our seniors get all the services they're entitled to in a conflict-free way. So just to, to make this crystal clear, uh, and under our current scenario, our current employment arrangement, an omb ombudsman could be um, advocating on behalf of an individual senior for a, a program or provision of a service that the county provides. Correct. Correct. So another and, unit, and that is the conflict of interest that the state is asking to be removed. Yes, that, that we may make a determination or have information right. or input or some role that would be impacting on the decision that of an ombudsman. And I would mention that we have paid ombudsman, but we also have, as uh, as we all know, a clear and very um, very diligent volunteer corps as well. And those volunteers will also be able to be utilized under the new system. All right. Thank you. Uh, any other board comments? Ms. O'Malley, I would just ask, can you comment on the safeguards that we've put in place from the county as far as oversight as we would transition to this new system? Yes. So again, the state has been a part of partner with us through this whole process in terms of making this determination to outsource as well as developing a transition plan. So we will be working with the state to identify uh, the complete and absolute transition plan, the role that CARI will take, the role the county will have, and those specific measures. So I'll be glad to get you those details as they're worked out. But I can assure you we have been part of the process and will continue to be part of the process as Carrie assumes these roles. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mellon. Mm -hmm. I just have other comment. I'd like to request that you please amend your motion to separate contract amendment number 13 on the agenda, which is a contract amendment with Skanska, and that provides extended services for the one Montgomery Plaza electrical and mechanical infrastructure construction, including pre-construction estimating um, and other review processes, logistics as far as planning. I oppose that original contract. I uh, was concerned about the high cost of the, the project and the limited bid responses, not only when it came to electrical, but also HVAC and general contracting. And Scansa had oversight over all of this. And now that it's increased in cost, I was concerned that there would be additional cost amendments. So I'd like, and that came to be true. So I'd like to oppose contract uh, amendment number 13. All right, so I will move then that um, I'll take that as a friendly amendment and uh, we will move to approve the preceding awards of contract uh, 1 through 12 and number 14 as described by the Deputy Chief Operating Officer, Ms. Barbara O'Malley, and to authorize the proper county officials to execute the same. Subject to the approval of the county solicitor, is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Lawrence. Any additional board comment? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. Are there any negative votes? Hearing none, motion carries.
Uh, next, we will move to uh, approve item number 13 uh, as an award of contract as described, or I'm sorry, as the contract amendment as described by the Deputy Chief Operating Officer, Ms. Barbara O'Malley, and to authorize the proper county officials to execute the same subject to the approval of the county solicitor. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Warren. Any additional board comment? All right, Ms. Washington, a roll call vote, please. Chair Arkbush. Aye. Vice Chair Lawrence. Aye. Commissioner Dale. Opposed. Motion carries. All right, uh, next, awards of contract <coughs> for the Justice Center. Yes, one, a contract amendment, assets and infrastructure, engineering, Gannett Fleming Incorporated of Camp Hill, PA, $145,299. Contract provides engineering and surveying to establish baseline parameters related to vibration and noise monitoring during the Montgomery County Justice Center project and to establish the plan for needed mitigation of future monitoring measures after construction starts. Amendment provides engineering support, installation of monitoring equipment, and monitoring services for four months of construction of the Montgomery County Justice Center project. Okay. I will move to approve the preceding award of contract as described by the Deputy Chief Operating Officer, Ms. Barbara O'Malley, and to authorize the proper county officials to execute the same subject to the approval of the county solicitor. Is there a second? Second. Great. And we will have a roll call vote on this. Is there any board comment? All right. Hearing none, we'll move to a roll call vote, please, Ms. Washington. Chair Arkush. Aye. Vice Chair Lawrence. Aye. Commissioner Gale. Opposed. Motion carries. All right, next awards of contract for our emergency procurement for COVID-19. Yes, these contracts provide various goods and services required for response to the COVID-19 pandemic. One, response services, public safety, software, Everbridge of Pasadena, California, $67,421.80. Contract provides for the Everbridge Community Engagement and Resident Connection Software Packages. Two, Response Services Amendment Finance, Whit O'Brien's LLC of Washington, D.C., $400,000. Original contract provides emergency management consultation and advisory services for federal cost recovery and reimbursement relating to the COVID-19 emergency. Amendment provides an increase in call center agents as needed. Contracted call center services projected through July 1, 2021. Emergency Consulting Services Extended through September 30, 2021. Three, Response Services Amendment, Health and Human Services, Printing and Mailing Services, NPC Incorporated of Claysburg, Pennsylvania, $5,732.89. Amendment requested for vaccination card mailing overages. Thank you. I will move to approve the preceding awards of contract as described by the Deputy Chief Operating Officer, Ms. Barbara O'Malley, and to authorize the proper county officials to execute the same subject to the approval of the county solicitor. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Lawrence. Any board comment? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. Are there any negative votes? Hearing none, motion carries. And uh, finally, uh, awards of contract for the Southeast Pennsylvania Regional Task Force. Yes. One, contract renewal software, Graywall Software LLC of New Haven, Connecticut, $38,125. Contract provides for a renewable subscription to the Virtual Emergency Operations Center on the Internet software for the City of Philadelphia. Software provides for licenses and service support for the Philadelphia Office of Emergency Management. Software is proprietary. Contract term is 8-7-2021 to 8-6-2022. Two, contract renewal, mass notification service, Everbridge Incorporated of Glendale, California, $804,518.10. System notification allows users to send notifications to individuals or groups using lists, locations, and visual intelligence. This service will be provided for all members of the SEPA task force for a term of 7-1-2021 through 6-30-2022. Services are available through a GSA contract. Thank you. I will move to approve the preceding awards of contract on behalf of the Southeast Pennsylvania Regional Task Force as described by the Deputy Chief Operating Officer, Ms. Barbara O'Malley, and to authorize the proper county officials to execute the same subject to the approval of the county solicitor. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Lawrence. Any board comment? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. Are there any negative votes? Hearing none, motion carries. Any closing commissioner comments? Okay. Uh, Then I will announce that our next Board of Commissioners meeting will be held July 1st, 2021, and I will move to adjourn the June 17th, 2021 meeting of the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Lawrence. Any comments? Move to a vote. Are there any negative votes? Hearing none, meeting is adjourned, and we will move to salary board. Good morning, Ms. Pardue and Controller Sanchez. Good morning. Good morning. 
All right, Ms. Card. Oh, I'm sorry. Before you begin, uh, do we have any public comment on salary board? We do. Okay. Just, just to, I want to remind the public that the same rules apply for public comment during salary board as our regular meetings. Okay, we have one person with their hand raised, um, Laura Lehman. You are now unmuted. Ms. Lehman, do you wish to provide public comment on salary board? <coughs> it looks to us like you're muted. Uh, if you are trying to speak, you need to unmute. Okay. Okay, we'll move on then. Uh, all right, Ms. Perdue. Good morning, members of the salary board. You should have in front of you the final copy of the salary board list. It is a three-page document dated Wednesday, June 16th, 2021, with a timestamp of 1 p.m. Of note, we have five retirees, Joanne Chinchulli from Children and Youth after 35 years, Jessica Tomaselli from Domestic Relations after 23 years, Janine Malloy from Juvenile Probation after 16 years, Carol Ventura from Senior Services after 16 years, and Joan Spady from the Sheriff's Department after 17 years. All positions have been reviewed and accounted for and are presented for salary board consideration. Thank you, Ms. Pardue. Is there a motion to approve the June 17th, 2021 salary board presentation as given by Director of Human Resources, Ms. Donna Pardue, and to authorize the proper county officials to execute the same? So moved. Moved by Controller Sanchez. Second. Second by Commissioner Lauren. Any board comment? All right. Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. Are there any negative votes? Hearing none, motion carries. So I know we have uh, an acknowledgement of one of our retirees this morning. Yes, we have um, Roberto Duarte to speak on um, Joanne Chichilli's behalf. Good morning, commissioners, and thank you for allowing me to share a few words about one of our long tenured team members. Um, jo uh, Joanne Chianchuli, who after 35 years of service to the children and youth of Montgomery County, has decided to start a new chapter in her life and enjoy retirement. Joanne started her career at OCY back in 1986 as a caseworker, and she was later promoted uh, to a casework supervisor in 1990. I have had the honor of knowing Joanne for only a short time, but in that time, I have learned that she's truly one of the most warm-hearted, kind, and compassionate people working here at OCY. I can only imagine the countless lives of children and youth that she has touched through her empathy, her kindness, and by simply being who she is. Joanne truly embodies the spirit of child welfare professionals. And that is obvious in so many different ways, but particularly, in her ability to connect with people. Joanne, I don't know if you are listening to this, but since we met, you have always said to me, Roberto, I am old school, I am old school. And being old school is a great thing in my book, Joanne, and something worth bragging about. I truly and sincerely wish you all the best in your new chapter. You deserve it. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Duarte, for those lovely words. And we wish Joanne and all of the other retirees uh, just a, a long and happy and well-deserved retirement. Uh, any other comments? No? OK. All right. Well, in that case, is there a motion to adjourn the June 17th, 2021 meeting of the Montgomery County Salary Board? 
So moved. Uh, moved by Controller Sanchez. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Lawrence. Any board comment? Okay, hearing none, we'll move to a vote. Are there any negative votes? Hearing none, meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody.